Starship is on the precipice of its next major hurdle toward Mars, a flight to 15 clicks and back. We'll begin with those updates. Then we'll discuss this week's Starlink news, debrief yesterday's GPS-3 mission, look at more missions to come, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Although we haven't seen any static fire flamage since last week's episode, that doesn't mean we aren't any closer to SN8's 15-click flight. We're getting very, very close. Throughout the week, Highway 4 has been closed repeatedly as SpaceX progresses through its final stages of testing. Some closures came and went without much action, some without any at all. But on Wednesday morning, the vehicle completed the cryoproof of its header tank in the nose as well as its methane tank. A second static fire is expected before its big launch day. Closures for yesterday and today were canceled, so we may be looking at Monday as a possibility for that. Cameron County also has these dates reserved for the launch itself. However, color me skeptical, I've been doing this long enough to know those dates probably aren't going to hold, especially after these recent cancellations. And as of the recording of this video, no NOTAM is in place with the FAA. When the 15 clicker does happen, SpaceX will be streaming it live so all of us pocket rocket loving nerds can enjoy the release. Although it may be quite a short live stream, a lot can go wrong, but we'll provide video, warts and all. SpaceX is 3 for 3 with Starship prototype hops, so I'm pulling for them. But as many of you are aware, Elon tends to expect the worst when it comes to the maiden flights of his new rockets. For example, prior to Falcon Heavy's first flight, Elon expected the vehicle to rud on the launch pad, leaving us only with the image of a single Tesla Roadster wheel bouncing down the road. But again, that wasn't the case. For Starship's upcoming flight, he thinks seeing a stable, controlled descent with body flaps would be great. Transferring propellant feed from the main to header tanks in relight would be a major win too. The further the rocket gets in its flight sequence, the more data they'll be able to analyze. Understanding exactly how the body flaps control pitch, yaw, and roll during descent, such that the ship is positioned well to relight, flip, and land would be a big win. We tested a subscale version of Starship in a wind tunnel with active arrow closing the loop for stability, so it will probably work at scale. But reality tends to bite you on the beauty. For the record, I would have loved to have seen Elon flying his Starship kite in a wind tunnel. The rocket will come in over the coast during its final approach, diverting at the last minute so long as its flaps flap and engines ignite. However, if all that happens and it still fails right at the end, some landing pad repairs will be needed to fill in the crater it will inevitably leave behind. Keep in mind, it may not even get that far. A rapid unscheduled disassembly could occur right off the launch pad. Fortunately, SN9 is almost ready to be the next victim. There are only minor differences between it and SN8, probably referring to its 100% 304L stainless steel makeup. SN8 still has some 301 in it. Saturday morning, SN9 was moved to the high bay where both of its aft flaps were promptly mounted to its body. This opened up some real estate in the mid bay for further stacking up SN10. Its main body is now good to go, well, good to go nowhere. And as far as other Starship serial numbers are concerned, here's a helpful visual provided by Brendan Lewis made earlier in the week. And here's where we're at as of the fourth. The Super Heavy Booster's rings are multiplying. Keep an eye out for a gold one with Elvish script written on it. The one to rule them all. No. All right, let's move on and debrief the GPS-3 mission. Last night, SpaceX got back around to launching their Falcon 9 rocket for the Space Force's fourth launch of their GPS-3 satellite, although the first few satellites belonged to the Air Force. It was successfully placed into orbit an hour and a half after liftoff. A couple Merlin engines were swapped out after the previous launch attempt due to issues with their gas generators. But as you can see, there were no qualms getting it off the pad this time. The booster also successfully landed on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You in the Atlantic Ocean. SpaceX used a new rocket booster, but because of an agreement with the U.S. military, future missions are authorized to fly used boosters, saving the taxpayers millions. We also have Starlink news to discuss this week. A public beta has started, but now Elon is saying several thousand more participation invitations are going out this week. Reddit user SnowJunkie21 posted a 12-second video of his unboxing of the user terminal. Elon responded that if you, you know, don't live life and fast forward, it actually takes about five minutes to set up, but with future improvements, probably less than three. The upfront cost for this kit is $499, that's $499, but lowering the price is on SpaceX's things to do list. It may sound rather pedestrian, however, doing so is their most difficult technical challenge. Another Reddit user, 4th Echelon 19, 
posted his Starlink experience so far, writing his average latency is about 34 milliseconds and that he is getting short dropouts every few minutes due to tree interference. Sounds like a personal problem, but he's still able to stream 4K with zero buffering. Elon responded that latency will improve significantly soon, bandwidth too. While SpaceX may have close to a thousand Starlink sats in space, a couple hundred of them are currently out of play because they haven't reached their final parking orbit yet. The more of them that sync up over time, the more areas can be served, including castaways who happen to have a Starlink user terminal and a power generator. Coming up is the launch of Crew-1, the first official mission of SpaceX's Dragon capsule with NASA astronauts on board. That's currently still a go for November 14th. This week I received my 3D printed model from the Bohemzo store. Custom nameplate included. If you're interested in owning one, you can check out their link in the description below. On the 18th, we've got the super secret Enroll 108 mission for the US National Reconnaissance Office. And SpaceX and NASA is now targeting November 21st for the first West Coast SpaceX launch in 17 months. Sentinel-6. But now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. Rocket Lab is pushing up their first booster recovery attempt from Mission 17 to 16, which is their next mission. They'll be attempting to deploy a parachute for their first stage, splash it down in the ocean, and hook it with a fishing pole as their next major hurdle toward mid-air retrievals. If all goes well, CEO Peter Beck will keep his promise and eat his hat because booster recovery is something he said they would never do. Yeah. The launch window for the mission, return to sender, opens November 16th. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Shout out to my eccentric members and patrons for supporting the show. You can do the same by checking out the links in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to support local SpaceX contributors. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.